Hello everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at the fundamental theorems of calculus. Part 1 states this. If f is continuous on a closed interval AB with A less than B, then cap f of x is going to be equal to A, the integral from A to x of f of t d of t. Now let's understand exactly what this is producing here. This particular part here, which is the definite integral, is of course going to provide an area. So what f capital F of x is, is really a function that is going to be describing the amount of area that is going to be bounded by f of t, the x-axis, from a to whatever value of x we choose that is on the closed interval from a to b. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this example here. And let's assume that uh, we just have this function being f of t. Now, say for example, we know that this particular function is, is continuous on the closed interval from 1 to 3. And we also know that 1 is less than 3. Then I can say that the area function, which is cap f of x, is going to be the integral from 1 to x of this f of t d of t. Now, of course, if I wanted to go ahead and let x be equal to 1, then this would be the integral from 1 to 1 of f of t d of t. We know, of course, that the area is going to be 0, and so f of 1 would be equal to 0. And then I can go ahead and change the value of x, so long as it's within this continuous closed interval, a, b. So, so long as it's between 1 and 3, I could actually go ahead and say, for example, let x be equal to 2. Now, let's just get an idea of what that would be. So then f, capital F of 2, which would then be associated with the area that is bounded by the curve f of t from 1 to 2. So what that would mean then is I would go ahead and shade all of this area over here, and that area would actually be the value of capital F of 2. So again, notice that what capital F of x is, it's really an area function based upon the value of f of t, the lower bound a, and the upper bound, which is going to be a variable in this case, called x. So, let's go ahead and start again. If f is continuous on this closed interval a, b, with a less than b, then capital F of x, which we said is an area function, is going to be the integral from a to x of f of t, d of t, will also be continuous on the closed interval a, b, and f, capital F prime of x is going to be equal to f of x for all x on that closed interval a, b. Now, we can also go ahead and state this a little bit differently. We can also state this as the derivative of the integral of a to x of f of t, d of t with respect to x is going to be equal to f of x for x, an element of the closed interval a to b. So, a couple of key concepts that we want to go ahead and take from this is that, of course, differentiation and integration are inverse operations of each other. And, so long as f is continuous on the closed interval a, b, it will have an antiderivative. And the antiderivative is what that is right there. Now, the important thing to remember is that, even though we may not be able to express it as a function, the antiderivative will exist. Okay, now, I want to go ahead and just very quickly just show how this is true. Okay. Now, if we go ahead and just follow the order of operations here, uh, what we have to do first is we have to go ahead and apply uh, the uh, definite integral. We know we're coming out with an antiderivative of cap f of t, evaluated from a to x, which then becomes f, capital F of x minus capital F of a. Remember that this part right over here is just going to be a number. And so what we come out with then is f of x, where the derivative of cap f of x is equal to f of x. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense now, and hopefully part one is very clear. Now let's go ahead and take a look at part two. Part two is something that we've already been dealing with quite a bit, and so we won't necessarily look at any particular examples for that, but if f is integral, integratable on the closed interval a, b, which has an antiderivative capital cap f on the closed interval a, b, then of course the definite integral can be evaluated 
by evaluating the capital f of x, or the antiderivative function of f of x, from a to b. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at one other application that we have, uh, which is not necessarily uh, part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, because that's only part one and part two, but it's a nice application of integrals, and it's the mean value theorem for integrals. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. If I had three people here, and if I was to go ahead and say, all of these people, of course, have different heights, what's the average height that they have? If I was to go ahead and actually calculate what that meant, then, of course, all of these people, if I was to go ahead and change their height, would all have the same height, because that would be the average height of all of these three people. So basically what we're doing then is we're taking a look at all of these different heights, and we're trying to make it so that all the heights are all the same, and therefore we found the average height of those three people. So let's go ahead and apply that now to the inverse. It says that if f is continuous on a closed interval a, b with a less than b, then there exists a c on that closed interval such that f of c is going to be equal to 1 over b minus a times it by the integral from a to b of f of x d of x. Now, f of c is called the average value of f of x. Okay, so what's, actually, what's happening here? And how does that relate to this? Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at actually applying this theorem to this particular function y is equal to x squared on the closed interval from 1 to 3. Now, of course, before we go ahead and actually jump to the conclusion of the mean value theorem for integrals, we have to make sure that the conditions are first true. So is f of x, which is equal to x squared, continuous on the closed interval from 1 to 3, and is 1 less than 3? Of course, the answer for those are yes, and so therefore we can go ahead and use the, the results of the mean value theorem for Andros to find out what the average value of f of x is. Now, f of c is going to be equal to 1 over 3 minus 1 times it by the integral from 1 to 3 of x squared d of x. Now, of course, all of this part right over here is something that we already know how to do. So we'll just come out to the result, which is f of c is equal to 4 and 1 third. Now, what exactly is happening here? is that if we go ahead and take a look at 4 and 1 third, 4 and 1 third is like maybe about, uh, let's say here's 5, there's 4, so 4 and 1 third is like maybe about here. So if we go across like this, and let's just go on the closed interval that we have, this is what it would look like. That is the average value. Now I'm hoping that you all see exactly what's taking place here. When we took a look at the family here of three people, and if we wanted to go ahead and find the average height of all of those people, then all of the people would assume this particular height. In the same respect, if we go ahead and take a look at this area here, if I was to go ahead and find the average value of the function over that particular interval, then the average value would be that height, because now instead of having all these different heights, I would have only one height over the entire interval. Now, what I have then is that I have what the average value of the function is. Oftentimes, what's going to happen is that you want to actually find out what the value of c that is. So, again, we know that f of c is equal to 26 over 6. If I substitute c into the function, so I get c squared is equal to 26 over 6. Take the square root of both sides, and then c is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 26 over 6. Now the thing is, is that we have to remember that the c has to be on the closed interval from a to b. So c has to be on the closed interval from 1 to 3 in this particular case, and therefore we know that the value of c is going to be 26, the square root of 26 over 6. So if I was to go ahead and draw this one down here, this value right over here is the value of c, which is the square root of 26 over 6. Okay. And there you go, that's how you can then go ahead and determine the average value of a function using your definite integrals and finding the average value or the value of c that can actually produce that average value for you. So let's go ahead and wrap up again. So with regards to the fundamental theorem of calculus, we've already been using part two quite a bit when we're actually evaluating definite integrals. Part one is a little bit different because now we're actually saying that there will in fact be an antiderivative 
for a continuous function on a closed interval from A to B, even though we may not be able to find out what that function is. And we also know that differentiation and integration are going to be continuous or, or formally inverse operations of each other. We also have a mean value there for integrals, which of course will help us find the average value of a function on a closed interval from A to B. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those examples in class and to see if you have any questions for clarification then. See you then. Bye-bye.